Good morning and welcome to worship. So this morning we continue in the fifth chapter of Matthew and you are going to hear um, in our gospel reading about how you are salt and you are light. So we're going to have this be called the Salt and Light um, Sunday. I hope that when you leave here from worship this morning, whether you're worshiping with us virtually, welcome to those who are on Facebook Live and on Zoom, or here in person, that you will be motivated to let your particular, unique DNA only belongs to you, Christ light shine in the world. And that you will be willing to be that salty person that God has created you to be. And we're going to focus on how we're not meant to hide our lights under a bushel. And we're not meant to let there be everything that gets in the way of salt being its true saltiness. So we don't want to dilute who you are. So I'm excited for this morning. Um, welcome if you are a guest or a visitor. We're so grateful we are on this journey of following Jesus together. Everyone who's here in um, person, I hope you also received the handout because our hymn of the day is not found in any of the books um, that we have. So you should have a sheet of paper with that hymn of the day. Um, we're so blessed where um, special hymns and worship is planned together um, by Thomas, our music and liturgy um, coordinator and person, and we have some special music um, with our bells this morning too. So welcome. Let us be light. Let us be salt. And I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in this moment of silence. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness, or our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We open with our hymn of this season, Crashing Waters at Creation. Of all who call upon you, 
by your spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. Read from Isaiah 58 chapter. Listen for the word of the Lord. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me in delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast I choose to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them? and not to hide yourself from your own kin, then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite our children to come kind of have a seat here on the floor in the front. So as we got started this morning, I said two words that's kind of going to be our theme for this morning and this week. Do any of you remember one or two of those words? Talk about friends behind. Salt and light. These are three different salts. Now, what color is salt usually? White. White. But some of you maybe have seen, sometimes there's pink salt. Well, this salt, look at the color of that salt. That's salt that has clay in it. I don't know if you can see in the back, it's kind of clay colored. And then this is salt as we expect it maybe to be. But look at this salt. That's different too, right? So there can be all sorts of different salts, different flavors to salt, different kind of salt. Um, can you name one of your favorite salty snacks? What do you think, Aubrey? What was that? Toast and bagels. Yep, those are good salty. What else? Pretzels are nice salty snacks, right? And Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its, oh man, that's a good one. What else? Right, the pink salt is from the ocean. But just like each of these salts is different, each of us is different. And we have different particular gifts and skills to share. Now this kind of candle, how many of you, just by raising of your hands, who are probably behind me, have seen this particular kind of candle? Do you know what this candle is used for? It sometimes is kind of a candle that actually, if you light it, it would usually stay lit for three days. And that's a long time, but to keep it in a safe place, you're gonna keep it lit. But these candles are often used Maybe when someone's really sad because someone's died. So they would take one of these candles and they would light it and they would remember that even with 
their sorrow and their tears, that loved one is with God. Because have you ever tasted some of your tears? They're kind of salty too, right? You know, sweat is salty. Salt is actually in our body and it comes out. But this is one of my favorite candles. I know, it may look to you just like your everyday ordinary candle in a cup. But look what happens when you light it. What color is that candle? Green. It's, it's, it's seen better days for sure. It's probably towards the end of its color changing times. But part of it is, I want you to remember that each of you has in you, each of you has in you your own particular Christ-like colored in its own beautiful, marvelous way. And we're gonna hear in our gospel reading from Matthew, this verse, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And every time we have a baptism, we give someone a candle. Maybe some of you remember seeing that, we give a candle, and we read that verse from Matthew 5. Because the idea is we let in all this love. Like, do this, like you're letting in all sorts of love. Can we do that? We just let in all that love, and then we have it to share it. Right? It's just kind of like when you eat that salty snack, then that salt comes out, it, it nourishes your body, your body needs salt. And when we do all those things that keep our Christ light really cold and aflame, then we have it to share. What's on your mind, Aubrey? Correct, do not eat too much salt. Nutrition tips also is part of our children's message. Very important, okay? But we're gonna put our hands out like this. We're gonna put them together. Please repeat after me as we pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for giving us, you for us salt, salt in, all in all flavors and varieties, just like you have, like you have given, us given us all gifts to share with the world. To share with the world. Thank, you thank you for the Christ light that shines in each one of us. Help us share all you've given to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. And now if you'd like to help with our noisy offering, you can grab one of the cans, and there's cans and cans, so share it with your friends. And people will raise their hands. If you have any change for change, this month, our change for change is going to a local food bank. We're doing the Super Bowl of Caring. So um, those of you who are Philadelphia Eagles fans uh, will have a collection for Philadelphia Eagles fans. For those of you who are Kansas City Chief fans, we have a collection for Kansas City Anything that you donate, both in cash and change, and also um, in, um, do you like um, that you that you give and change to change will also go to a local food bank, and some of it will go to the organization Super Bowl of Caring. So if no other hands are raised, go ahead and bring them back up here, and we'll put them back. Thanks everyone for sharing your generosity and teaching our kiddos that little things brought together make a big impact. So last month we collected Change for Water for Life, a local organization who works on water um, issues throughout the world. And we collected $280 um, coin, nickels, um, dollars and checks at the time. So thank you for your generosity. That's being shared with them. Yeah, that has to stay though. You know, it's just a learning lesson. Perfect. I invite
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So if you want an actual take-home activity, one of the things I would encourage you to consider this week is just putting a piece of paper um, on your refrigerator, um, maybe somewhere where you see it, and at the top, write salt, and also write light. What we look for is often what we find, salt and light. So what could this possibly mean that Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world? What it means is that these gifts God has given us are meant to be shared. But so often in this human journey, it's so much easier to see it in other people than it is in ourselves. Which is why if you were to write on a list this week of salt and light, think about when something has spiced up your life. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this, but occasionally I have 100% forgotten to even add just that smallest half teaspoon of salt to a recipe. Anyone else ever do that? It makes the whole thing almost tasteless. And light, we've come through many a dark days, more darker days than we usually have in Colorado, and I don't know about you, but all week I have just felt my spirit lifted when that sun is shining. And there are many sources of light. I couldn't find them. I think I still have more of them. Some of you may have remembered when I shared these. Do any of you remember these glasses? It was when my oldest child was in sixth grade and went on a field trip. And so now that child, who at the time was 12, is 20, 29. Okay, that was a long time ago, whatever that math is. I was first exposed to these. And these glasses they used at the, I think it was at the Natural History Museum. Because when you have these glasses on, you can see all the light that your eye without these glasses cannot see. And it's a great reminder that even when maybe we cannot see the light, like in the many dark days we just experienced in the month of January, it's still there. Salt and light. Jesus, in John's Gospel in particular, says many things about himself. You're familiar with those, right? I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. And here, Jesus is saying it about you and about me. Not because you've done anything to create this in yourself, not because you've done anything to deserve this gift. It's in your DNA. 
It's who you are and how God is inviting you to show up in the world. You have a very particular Christ light to let shine. Do you have some idea of what your particular Christ light looks like? I'm looking for like a nod, uh, I don't really know, I wouldn't use that language. Part of what we get to do in our youth ministry and confirmation, and often we even talk about it in Sunday school, who you are, exactly who you are with your highs and your lows, with your valleys and your mountaintop experiences, those are you. And that's how God has particularly made you, as unique to you as your fingerprints, as the iris in your eye, your Christ light, this world needs. Your saltiness, this world needs. Now, it's kind of a funny thing to think of how saltiness would lose its taste. But maybe you've made this mistake in cooking also. It asked for a tablespoon, but you put barely a teaspoon. Salt can be diluted. Without enough salt, something won't have its true flavor. So if you're spending your time and your energy trying to have other people's Christ lights, trying to be salty in the way that other people are salty, we're missing the point. There's only one you created in god's wonderful image you have beautifully been and wonderfully made to be salty to let your light shine so in these verses that start at 17 that follow i want to continue the point that i was making last week jesus goes on to talk about it's about the fulfilling of the law now this isn't about now jesus has said these wonderful things about us your salt and your light but now bring down the hammer but it's this is a continuation the law is a gift so one of the things that i've been thinking about is there's some verses of scripture we come to memorize because maybe you're familiar with that verse we read at um, baptisms and we say let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. But another way we often kind of memorize scripture is through songs. I'm going to take you back to the 70s. Some of you weren't even alive. But I think you might know this song. It's from a musical. Anyone with me? You are the light of the world. Do you remember that? You are the salt of the earth, right? Okay, that's another song that's also interwoven with the other song. That's how I work because I'm not really a musician. But music can be one of the ways that scripture gets written on our hearts. So maybe this week, you're gonna look for, listen for music. We hear about saltiness, we hear about light. Because one of the realities also about the salt that we are, it's in our sweat and it's in our tears. The particular way that God has beautifully and wonderfully made you is not only in those peak and mountaintop moments, but it's in the deep valleys, in your heartaches, and in your heartbreaks, it's both. And in both of those places, we're invited to share it. Share your heartaches and share your joys. Share those mountaintop moments, but also share the deep valley of darkness and sorrow. Today, our Healing Grief group will meet again in person at 1230. It's an ongoing, open, welcoming group because there is so much heartache and heartbreak in this world. 
You're welcome, and you're invited to join in. I'll get to meet with our high school um, kiddos at, in this evening, and we'll share a meal. I'm guessing salt is going to be a major ingredient in that. Joy. It brings me great joy to be with our young people in this congregation because they remind me you can go in a moment from tears to laughter, from sorrow to joy. And Jesus, I believe, calls us in our joys and in our sorrows and the vast space in between all of that to be you. Because this kingdom of heaven that Jesus is speaking about is not about the hereafter, it's about the here now. If you don't let your Christ light shine, if your taste, your saltiness, the particular flavor you have to add to this world is diluted or discarded, the world is missing. You, you were made for this. I hope you'll consider reflecting on that this week. And maybe, just maybe, you'll take this to heart. One of the ways that we grow and expand on this spiritual journey, on this, this journey of following Jesus, is by sharing what we have to be unafraid. Be unafraid of sharing your light and sharing the particular savory taste that is you. Someone who used to worship here this morning did just that. Because he took the heart, because you know I mean it, my cell phone number should be in your cell phone so you can text me. And he did. And he shared his light. And he shared his saltiness. He made a difference in my world. So maybe that's you this week. You are invited to share your light because there's someone you know and maybe it's even someone you're just in a briefest moment of contact with. I let your light shine. Or send me a text message. It can be the saltiness of your sorrow and your tears or the bright light of a victorious moment or something in between. We were made for this. Amen. Our hymn of the day is found printed on um, your handout, Bring Forth the Kingdom. I invite you to stand as we sing and then we'll receive our new partners in ministry following that.
seated. Last weekend, we had an opportunity to gather together for a lunch um, with some of the folks who've been um, joining us in worship who are um, committing themselves to be new partners in ministry. So at this time, um, we're doing an official um, welcome. So, um, Lane, I know you're here by yourself, but it's okay. The other people will be coming at the next service, but I invite you to come forward. But you're going to stand right in front of me, so you won't be like big on camera. I will, I'll just be big on camera thing. I know, not my thing, not most other people. So, I invite you all to join with me. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for this person, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as a new partner into the life and ministry of this congregation. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to trust God and love one another, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and strive for justice and peace in all the world. Elaine, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I invite everyone here to stand, because we make promises too. We're in this together. So people of God, do you promise to support and pray for Elaine and our other new partners in ministry in their life in Christ? If so, please respond with, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, God, for our new partners in ministry, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ, and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, and in the service to others. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we clap for Lynn and her courage. You can go back to your seat and our worship continues um, with um, just, well, just a brief mission moment. Um, we are in this together. And so keep knowing that, that participation is the key to our company amongst us. So if you have questions, if you have curiosities, we get to keep talking with each other. But now I'm going to have you stand right back up, get exercise here as you're able, able, and we're going to have our profession of faith in the Apostles' Creed. If I think of the slideshow correctly, you'll find that printed in your bulletin, or you can read it in, on the screen. We profess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of the people, each petition ends with merciful God, to which the congregation's response is, receive our prayer. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Merciful God, inspire our wonder at creation from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know well 
bring healing to lands and communities experiencing nat natural disasters. Merciful God, loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels. Put an end to hunger and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee. Abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfies, satisfy those afflicted in any way. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in our trust in you. We lift up the prayers for those in our community, praying for the family of Heidi Tariello as they grieve. The Eli Towater family, Taylor and Holton, also as they grieve. Carol Ati, Randy and Sue Pfluger, Jesse Siddig, Pastor Mark Kratz, Pastor Andrea Dowden, Jack Bell, Mandy, the Smith family, Bob Berryman, Diane Way, Elizabeth, Andrew Ike, the Fluger family, and those we now name either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide us to let our true lights shine and to be the salt of the earth. Strengthen our faith, decrease our fears, uphold us by your love, and guide us to live deeply connected to you, experiencing your kingdom moments. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and our hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. In the name of Jesus, together we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another. And then you can go ahead and uh, be seated and our ushers will collect our offering um, while we hear some special music.
for your generosity that makes our mission and ministry possible. I invite you to stand as we pray together our prayer of the day. You'll find that printed in your bulletin and also on the screen. Let us join in praying together. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of justice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It was on the very night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. United as one, we join together in praying the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you who are joining us on Zoom or Facebook Live, or if for your own reasons you've taken a communion kit and you're having communion at your seat, hear these words of Jesus to you. This is my body given for you. Take and eat. And this is my blood shed for you. Take and drink. Here at Lord of the Fields Lutheran Church, we practice communion in the manner of Jesus who opened his arms so wide and welcomed everyone. And that means you. You are invited and welcomed. In our cups, the dark color, our wine, and the white is grape juice. All of our wafers are gluten-free. Our ushers will help kind of guide you to start. We start with the front rows now, who come up through the middle and go to the sides. And if you're sitting on the side, you head towards the back and come up the middle row. Um, we invite you to come taste and see the goodness of the Lord. May it refresh your light and your saltiness. This table has been prepared for you.
and his are evil. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Our announcements are very brief uh, this morning. Um, high school youth group has been moved to this week um, because of Super Bowl next week. Um, our healing grief group, men's Bible study is this Saturday. And then mark it on your calendar. Join us for a day of Centering Prayer, a retreat that's kind of a kickoff um, to this season of us preparing for my sabbatical coming up this summer. We're in this journey together, so let's keep um, sharing our light and sharing our salt. God knows this world and our community need it. So take to heart now these words of benediction and blessing, that they would work in you and that they would walk with you, and that they would be words that you would share with the world. Go forth into the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good and render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor, love, and serve one another and all people. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. We close with our closing hymn, Christ be our light.